uh, BLM uh, started as basically a garage enterprise. Uh, Patrice Cullors, Alicia Garza, and Opal Tometi trying with very little resources to get a thing going, mainly using a hashtag, mainly using social media activism, sometimes derided as slacktivism. Uh, but they were not slacktivists at all. They were, they were uh, very trained and very disciplined. By 2015, they got their first major break, and that was after the killing of Michael Brown in Ferguson, an interesting case we might get back into. Um, their slogan, together with the slogan, hands up, don't shoot, went viral. By some accounts, shared 21 million times over a short period in the US. And that drew a lot of attention, not only to the idea of police violence, but also to their movement in particular. And they leveraged that attention to raise money uh, of course, raising money involves all kinds of tax events. And so uh, after they became the time person of the year or runner up time person of the year, a great accolade for them, I'm sure, they approached Thousand Currents, which is a nonprofit sort of umbrella organization, which helps, which has, works as a consulting firm, basically to help NGOs uh, manage their finances. Thousand Currents then moved Black Lives Matter uh, sort of uh, nominal HQ to Delaware, which is basically a tax haven state. It has some of the lowest taxes in America. And they started collecting serious money. Uh, by 2019, their net assets were valued at $3.4 million. So it's about 70 million rand. And that's their net assets. They'd already been paying salaries. They already established more than 40 chapters around the world. Um, each chapter involving someone who's being paid. They've got assets, they've got office blocks, they've paid for media campaigns and for hosting events. Uh, we at the Institute know, you know, this kind of thing takes money. They have a lot more of it. Uh, after the death of Michael Brown, uh, of George Floyd, in 2020, their fundraising campaign went through the roof. And in just a few weeks, they uh, reported to the Associated Press that they had raised 1.1 uh, million donations at an average of $33 a donation, which comes to $33 million. Uh, of that $33 million, they pledged $12 million to particular projects and kept the rest for themselves for later, which means that at the moment, their net asset value is looking like half a billion rand. Now, are we saying that that in and of, them, in and of itself is a bad thing? Um, no, not at all. Uh, they are. It, it, uh, what it is to say is that they're very serious uh, uh, activists and that they appreciate uh, what you need for activism includes uh, public platforms, access to uh, uh, a very widespread American platforms like CNN, MSNBC, New York Times, Washington Post. So they sort of get the free media there, but it also requires uh, paying salaries. And uh, I sort of admire their tenacity and their enterprise in that regard. I do want to draw attention to the fact that there's another official Black Lives, well, there's another organization not-for-profit, that has the Black Lives Matter in its name. This is called the Black Lives Matter Foundation, as opposed to the Black Lives Matter Global Network. This was also originally founded in uh, California, uh, much later, and it was founded by a man called Robert Ray Barnes. So I have to check my notes there. Now, his idea was uh, uh, sort of because Black Lives Matter, what we need to do is uh, grow a sense of unity between uh, black people and the police, between all people and the police. We need civility, we need harmony, we need unity. Uh, as a result of this, in part, uh, the BLM Foundation has been derided in every major American publication that I can find. The story was first launched by BuzzFeed about a month ago, but since then it's been picked up almost everywhere. It's been derided as fake Black Lives Matter because Black Lives Matter as an idea or as a movement now stands for disharmony between the police and the public. It stands for defunding the police and it stands for a series of other uh, reforms. Uh, it does not stand for uh, civility and harmony between the police. This is the basis of one of the bases upon which uh, Robert Ray Barnes's organization has been slandered. Another is that he hasn't spent some of the money that he's raised. I'm not too sure about that. If so, you know, that's no good. So, so yeah, there are definitely two different ideas about Black Lives Matter. Uh, and, and, and there's only one that's winning in the public square. Hmm. 
and that's that's the 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 Black Lives Matter. The more uh, I, I don't think it would be um, unfair to say the more aggressive version of the movement, uh, led by the three ladies on the cover of this report. Yes, it's the more revolutionary, and. Uh, I, I suppose before getting further into BLM Global Network, it's worth saying that uh, although they're the three co-founders um, and there are chapter heads, for example, the DC chapter head said that Black Lives Matter means defund the police. She was criticizing the Washington DC mayor who'd painted Black Lives Matter in sort of 10 meter high letters down uh, one of the avenues of the US Capitol. And they said, no, this is not the point. The point is to defund the police. Um, but they are not alone. There are uh, sort of independent actors that have in the public mind been deemed to be Black Lives Matter leaders. One of them is Colin Kaepernick. Uh, he was a footballer, a B-string footballer who uh, refused to stand up while singing the American National Anthem a few years ago, insisted instead on taking a knee to draw attention to Black Lives Matter. Uh, and uh, there's the Reverend Al Sharpton, uh, who is a, a famous American evangelist uh, who spoke at George Floyd's funeral and has led Black Lives Matter uh, rallies. And they, so Colin Kaepernick, for example, um, uh, wrote a tweet just after George Floyd died, which he pinned up. And I'd like to just read this out. Um, when civility leads to death, revolting is the only reaction. The cries for peace will rain down. And when they do, they will fall on deaf ears. We have the right to fight back. So again, we sort of get the sense that there's this there's this Black Lives Matter movement, which the organization is the principal actor of, but which has gained broader celebrity uh, support, uh, which stands very much at odds with what, for example, BLM Foundation would like, which is harmony, peace. They're making the cries for peace. Uh, Colin Kaepernick and others say, no, the, the cries for peace must fall on deaf ears.